It was here at Ascot's furlong pole that Pat Edry, whip flailing in his right hand, drove Grundy upsides Bustino in the 1975 King George VI and Queen Elizabeth stakes. Many have described it as the race of the century. A paddock filled with the cream of European bloodstock. Here was serious equine war in prospect. Grundy, the derby winner, the Irish derby winner, and today seeking to become the highest stake earner ever trained in this country. I think he was the epitome of, of, of an English bred horse. Grundy, the top three-year-old of the season, and here, perhaps the outstanding four-year-old in training, Bastino. He was just a horse who could just gallop and gallop and gallop. He's really got depth. He's become a really powerful individual. We went there thinking we'd win. But he hasn't been a better one. Before we sit back and enjoy the epic encounter, what about its background? Peter Warwin was the trainer of Grundy, and he tells us about the horse's early days. We used to go and look at the yearlings every year, Overbury Stud. We also go and have lunch with uh, Tim Holland Martin and his wife, who then were running the stud. And we always looked at their yearlings every year, and this year there was this very flashy-looking uh, yearling there, full of bounce, and Peter Diamond, who was a marvellous stud groom there, he said this is a very special horse. And he didn't have a very good pedigree. He was my great-nephew, but on his dam side, it was quite a, a rough pedigree, really. And he, he was bought, the dam was bought in the war uh, by the Holland Martins when prices for for animals were at their very lowest. Anyway, and we went to the sales and we thought we'd go to about 10,000 guineas for him. There was something about him. And uh, so we bid, I think he, Dr. Bittadini, who I was training for, I trained some good horses for him before then. And so I was quite in control, really, to buy horses for him or help. Uh, with Keith Freeman was his racing manager. And we bid, I think, nine and a half thousand guineas, and then somebody bid ten thousand. And then I said to the doctor, look, come on, with one more bid, and we got him for ten and a half thousand guineas. And, of course, Keith Freeman was involved, but he rushed up after the sale, and the horse was actually knocked down to him. But, in fact, it was uh, Dr. Vitadini had made the last bid. So we got him home, and normally it takes me about a month to break a horse in mm. from the time one gets them. And this horse, oh, he was full of fire. It took us two months to break him in and make him so he was amenable. So Grundy was flashy, but Bastino less so. His jockey, Joe Mercer, adored him. He could just gallop and gallop and gallop. And I said, do all right. And of course, as a, a three-year-old, he, he, he looked like a door stare. Um, won the Lingfield Derby trial and the Great Voltage uh, as well, um, and of course went on to win the St Ledger. Correct. Was it more of a cup horse you were thinking than a top mile and a half horse? Well, I, I think Dick, you know, has his own opinions, and we both actually used to agree. We thought he was a mile and a half better, a mile and a half, and he would have been at two two miles. I think at two miles he probably would have run himself out. He was a free horse. He didn't didn't drop the bridle much. He was always on the bit with you, and uh, travelled always in a race. He travelled. Absolutely superb, but he didn't have much of a kick. Bastino went straight from the 1974 St. Ledger to start his four-year-old campaign the following year in the Coronation Cup. But that was not what his legendary trainer, Dick Herm, would have planned. He ran first time out in the Coronation Cup. I wanted to run him in the Yorkshire Cup to give him a race. But the Lady Beaverbrook, uh, who owned him, said to me, um, no, I don't want running anything but a group one. So uh, that was that. I tried my best, but she wouldn't give in. He was very fit and well. And uh, he broke the track record in the Coronation Cup, which he won. I think it was a good race. I, it, it went off at a fair pace, and I just sat very handy on him. And halfway down the hill, I thought, you know, we'd let it go a little faster because he was traveling so good. And uh, I took it up, I think, way before I got to the straight on him and kicked for home and he just sailed away with it. He sent Martin South stole the race, but when you look back at it, I think it was a course record. 
Grundy, meanwhile, had turned into a champion two-year-old with a victory in the Dewhurst. But hopes of early classic glory at three were jeopardised. Trotting round in the covered ride one morning, uh, behind another horse, uh, whipped out, whipped round and, and kicked him in the face. Uh, just uh, um, above the sinuses. And our wonderful vet, Charles Frank, was there, came along and so he said, as long as it hasn't affected the sinuses, he, he should be all right. But there was a great dent in his face where he'd been kicked. But it took time to recover from that. And luckily, he was a very tough horse. We went for the guineas and we had some Newmarket striking stable lads who tried to disrupt the start. And uh, they were on the course and causing trouble. And then some hardened race goers went down and uh, bung their glasses at them and threatened them uh, and, uh, and drove them off the course. And the, uh, uh, the starter uh, rang up the steward and said, look, they're sitting in front of the stalls, Alec Marsh. And uh, can I have permission to start the race a bit short in front of the strikers? So it was only run over seven and a half furlongs. And we were beaten by Volkonsky of Henry Cecil. And uh, we went to go and win the race, and Volkonsky just ran us out of it. But if it had been run over the, over the proper trip of a mile, I think we probably would have won. So I said we must get him another run in. So we ran him in the Irish 2000 guineas, which he won extremely easily. So anyway, we came back from that very happy. We worked him on the downhill gallop at Lambourne, which is a marvellous trial ground for Epsom. And uh, we went into the race and again, Pat Eddery, marvellous, marvellous jockey. He was always in the first half dozen, into the straight about third or fourth, quickened up, quickened up, quickened up, and away he went. And we won that and uh, couldn't believe it and after the race I was introduced to the Queen and couldn't believe that and the press came up and said uh, what are your plans? <laughs> I said my plans to have a very large drink. <laughs> so then after that we then went to the Irish Derby we won that extremely easily and then we had this fight on our hands uh, at Ascot. The build-up was, uh, was fairly traumatic because here was serious equine war in prospect because you had absolutely uh, every, every ingredient for a, a, a really serious encounter and Grundy was aiming, if he, if he won it, was worth around 80,000 to the winner. If he won it, he would become the the richest earning English trained horse in um, Europe. L Lady Beaverbrook, who owned, owned Bastino, had uh, a couple of uh, uh, serious performers to test Grundy to his absolute utmost in Highest and Kinglet. And uh, from a commentator's point of view, it, it, it was a wonderful race to cover.